All right, it's Mike. It's old religion dystopia again. No one versus belief. So, I got my bird and uh, the plants in the room that I lay my head and do my recordings. Still got to do now. We got rid of all the fish. To be what this has anything to do with First Corinthians. Nothing. Except I just want to bend a little bit. And so I got rid of all the fish. I made the place a little more functional. I couldn't give up the budgie. The budgie's been with me for seven years. The Pete, the, the, that fish, as cool as he was, it was a cool fish. Uh, I had to let that go because of just health issues. And I still have to work on my son's room and then figure out what to do. He keeps on talking about he wants to have rats, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to be the one who's going to have to take care of these rats. He's only with me every other weekend, and every Wednesday for the most part. Some other, some type, some weeks are different. Sometimes I get them more than that. But and then there's, I don't know, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So I got to prepare for that inevitable day when I can't do anything anymore. Also, I had made a commitment to myself and to God that I'd finish reading all the Bible again online, even if nobody hears it. Maybe it's just for me at the end of the day, and that probably is the case, as I'm just sharing my journey with other people. Now, I know I'm gaslighted and that I'm uh, blacklisted and that I'm shadow banned on YouTube and pretty much on BitChute, and I have difficult times getting anything on Rumble or any other flat platforms out there, Bright and and etc. I don't know if it's because they want money or something like that, but I don't make any money doing this. Uh, for one person, just for one person this past year that's actually helped out, Jesus Loves Ministry, nobody else has been helping out, so they've been paid for their internet. But thank you, Jesus Loves Ministries, for your generosity, because it at least pays for half of the internet, and I truly appreciate that. And, you know, the few people that do listen, thank you. And I thank you very much. And a uh, few people are subscribed. You know, I had almost 4,000. Just, I don't know how many numbers short of 4,000. It was pretty darn close. Subs on YouTube before they took me down last year. And bit shoots just creeping along. Maybe someday it'll get to 1,300. But And, you know, I could do uh, post a whole bunch of stuff about numbers. And get a following, but I'm not gonna get anything out of it. And uh, most importantly, uh, it's just an ego trip. Now I'm doing the journey for the truth, and so I've discovered a lot of things what the Bible actually says compared to what other people say. And how I discovered that is because I simply just read the Bible, which makes me wonder how many people who call themselves Christians that really read the Bible. And if they do read the Bible, do they read the Bible like? Uh, New wine glasses, new new wine skins, or are they old? They poisoned by dogma and doctrine from the cult or sect that they belong to. I got a feeling that that's a big part of everything. So I I would just encourage everybody to do your best to read this book openly, wherever it takes you, and uh, it's going to take you to the Lord, and it's going to cause some problems as it should with uh, your pastor with your priest, with your bishop with your Sunday school teacher with your own family and uh, it's unfortunate you know like um, there are more things. my big brother Eric thank you for sending the food I don't know what I'm going to do with the food you know I'm kind of in a position I've been better off not to do that but you know, what do I get to the point where I can't even cook the damn stuff? Anyways, there's spam at least. I don't know what they do with spam, but probably won't do much good for my MS. Saying all that, I, it's, it's I, the thought that counts, and also, a, you know, it'd be nice if you listen to me. <laughs> I'd trade anything if you just listen to me. i get back all that stuff, and if I had money, I'd give you $10,000 if you just listen to me. But that's not going to happen. You have to do what you got to do. That's the way things are. Everybody thinks they know their siblings. And they don't. They don't know me at all. I am not who I was 50 years, 54 years ago or 40, 
four years ago or 33 th whatever years ago or 20 years ago or even 10 years ago anyways you know as far as the job goes and all that kind of stuff uh, I can't think of a more important job right now is to study the Bible and, and commit myself to the Lord even if it's just for a short season I do believe the Lord will bless my son in ways I don't understand by doing it that's my hope my faith and hey, my son won't see it no one will ever see it those blessings no notice it but I believe if you stay committed to the, the Lord of all spirits the King of Kings our Messiah you focus on him that he will bless you in these world in ways that we don't quite understand unfortunately it does cause a big wedge between you and the rest of the world but and you know here's the thing too is like um all I'm doing is making some few comments and reading the Bible and you decide the rest if you don't want to believe in this I perfectly understand I really do in fact I understand that better today than I understand people who say they do believe in the Bible but don't really believe in the Bible and they believe part of it but they don't really study enough and then believe what it actually says so let's get into 1st Corinthians as a commitment to Lord God Almighty, Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, Heavenly Father, all praise and glory to you, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not quite sure how that all works out, but I'm sure not too many people really do. But somehow you came here and dwelt in the flesh of a human being, paid for the sins of the world, rose from the dead, and fulfilled all things, came back your second coming for your bride. And thank God you did that, all those things for gives a man true hope in a world where there's no other hope you know I was thinking about after I get all this done what would I do if some if a training what kind of work would I do that would be satisfactory in a guy in my position and none then I think of like well what would I do for my son's future well I can't think of any other work than doing this Lord God Almighty so Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and so Sosthenes, 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 excuse me, our brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours now if, if uh, Marley as he likes to go by and the and internet you know who you are you asked this question about Saints and the connection with the with the Roman Catholics well the Roman Catholics like everything else they do call no man father so they make sure every man is called father uh, God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son whoever believed in him should not perish so what do they do? They create parishes. <laughs> and when it comes to saints, they think that they're the only ones that have the quality or the qualified to determine one is a saint or not. But as we learn here, the saints are those who have faith. Who are they? Unto the church of God, at, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. So it was all those who believed in Jesus were the saints. Just as to say, those who have truly binding faith are saints. Now, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden we're better than everybody else. That's a falsehood. And it's not based on miracles, and it's not based on any of that stuff. It's simply based on the fact, do you have abiding faith in Jesus or not? Now, these people this time, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, those who received it. And they were saints, what? They were saints, soldiers, priestly soldiers and kings rulers in their dominion in the main they're being in Judea and areas run about to tell the truth about Jesus they were saints for sure and many of them paid their price paid a price for it and this world which was as Paul says it was not that big of a deal considering the fact that you have eternal life with the king of kings the Lord of lords and this world back then was there could have been a worse time to which says a lot, because this place still is pretty rough, isn't it? You know, it's a very lonely place for many people. Even though there's people all around you, you're still, you're in a sea 
in the sea. There's a very much uh, reference many times to peoples. Many people around you. A sea of people. And it certainly is the case. Especially when you live in cities. Or reduction camps as they've created. Or city states. Where you're in a sea of people. And a sea of cars. A sea of houses and etc. Right? Now I could talk a lot about other things too. About what's going on. And you know this that and the other. But you know, a couple things. I strongly recommend that you. If you want to understand about the. Uh. Cobra, Venom, Inquisition, Directive, 19. Uh, go to um, Watch the Water. I think there's a very good stuff you'll see in there. It kind of puts all the pieces together. Which I was trying to tell people two years, two years ago, over two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. It's been right two years ago. Of the connection between... The Jesuits, the Jesuit Oath, and what we're experiencing. The Diviners of the Serpent. They have a great obsession with snakes. You'll be shocked to find out what might be in the Cobra, Venom, Inquisition Directive. Anyways, back to all this stuff. Grace be unto you, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as a testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Even as the the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are they doing? They were specifically waiting for who? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If it didn't happen, we're in deep trouble. Every single one of us will call ourselves Christians. You can get mad at me. In fact, it's quite reasonable for you to get mad at me. In the process of discovery of the truth, one has to shed away a lot of falsehoods that we have devout faith in. But we have to let them go. We just have to. If we were to move forward in the way of the truth of life, we have to be honest Honest, but with the words on these pages actually say, not what other people say or claim they say. Even worse, how they take these things and turn a little sermon in out of a couple of verses that browbeat you and make you feel guilty for who you are. It's a terrible thing to do. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? That, what? So they're waiting for the, the coming of the Lord. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? When is the coming of the Lord supposed to happen? At the end. That ye may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they're waiting for the coming of the Lord. They're going to be confirmed. And they shall be confirmed. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? They will be found blameless in the day of the Lord. We know the day of the Lord. The Lord is the same thing as the second coming. All right. Is the judgment of Jerusalem and the temple and the end of the Mosaic Age. The finishing of that up. <clears throat> and, you know, that four-year period of Jabez's trouble is the ushering of the in totality of the Christian Age. Now, it's not the... We can go into it a little deeper. In fact, we will go into it a little deeper when it comes to Corinth and a few other things, but... There's also the day of Pentecost and all that kind of stuff. When, the, but that's all just steps leading towards the end of one age and the beginning of a new age, which the Bible claims the Christian age will never end. So then the question is: Is what actually is the Christian age? What is the heaven in our lives? What is the kingdom of heaven? <clears throat> because we'll find that uh, it's nothing what we thought, just as the Jews thought when the Messiah came. That it was nothing what they thought always God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his 
Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. <clears throat> well, that's definitely not happened in 2022, or you can say that in 1922 or in 1822, and it hasn't been that for a long time, if ever. Except for a small band, an elect group of people, seemingly to almost 2,000 years ago, maybe. That there be no division among you, and that, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I, of, I am of Paul, and I am of Paulo, and I am of Cephas, I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God I, that I baptized none of you, but Crisp, Crisp, Crispus and Gaius. Lest, it, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name, and I baptized also the household of Stephanus, Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise, and where is the scribe, and where is the dis disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom know not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is, par, is Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. <clears throat> it gives me some comfort knowing who I am and how I must seem to others. God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. The base things of the world, the things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. <clears throat> and no, we're not talking about Baal. Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, second, uh, first Corinthians chapter two. Excuse me. And I, brethren. When I came to you, n came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ, him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, 
but in the power of God. How be it, ye, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the wor this world, nor the princes, plural, of this world, that come to naught. <clears throat> but I speak the wisdom of God in, the mystery, in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world know, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, that's if he's talking about the princes of the world who crucified the Lord of glory, that was the scribes, the Sadducees, the uh, Pharisees, the elders, etc., right? Of Israel, of Jerusalem. Along with the Romans. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Let's try that again. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that <clears throat> he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I'm going to take a little break. It's starting to get hot. Somebody, I, I, it's time to turn on the AC, I guess. Corinthians, not chapter 3. You know, before we get in there, I was thinking about my son's room. He wants to have rats. Two of them. What a nightmare. What an idea. What a nightmare. God have mercy. Anyways, if I give him those rats, it's going to have to be closer to where I trudge around because um, it's just too far deep into his room. His room is such... Every time he shows up, it's a disaster. And... Um, so anyways, um, maybe if we have to talk about where we're going to put this we're going to get a rat or two that way i uh pay a little more attention to him when it when it's when i'm when he's not around because they need attention they're quite interesting creatures and one of the things is they like attention from human beings so who knows i don't really want them i'm kind of happy for the bird I don't know what I want, to be honest. Actually, I wish, I wish my life to be drastically different, but it's not going to be what I want it to be. So, all praise and glory go to you, Lord Jesus. All praise and glory go to you, Abba Father Jehovah. Uh, the God who created the, the heavens and the earth, divided the waters from the waters, created the hot firmament, the houses, the houses, the sun, moon, and stars. The God that created life and breathed life into man. And uh, this place, it's as bizarre as I'll get out when you think about it. But anyways, I, brethren, cannot speak unto you 
as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. That, of course, we said earlier about the spiritual things and all that. I have fed you with milk, not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Which is interesting, his statement, because it seems like most Christians are still that way today. Even lifetime Christians. It is difficult. By uh, the, the meat, oh my God, is it difficult to accept. Uh, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, are ye not carnal, walking as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who is Apollo? Or, and who is Apollo? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as Lord the, the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollo's watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Lord, give me the increase. I need it in all ways. Now, he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, and ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other, founda for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, woody, excuse me, wood, hay, stubble, Every man worketh shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it, it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of that sort it is. If any man work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. <clears throat> know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, he shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are? Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seeketh to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He hath taken the wise in their own craftiness. And again, God knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. Ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. <clears throat> let, let a man be account of us. So let a man be account of us as of the ministers of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or men's judgment, yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. 
therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. There it is again, expectation. What? The Lord would come when? As he said earlier, they were waiting for him to come. They themselves. And I don't think they were uh, blinded by their faith in that there's something distant in the many, many generations away. No, they themselves were waiting for the Lord to come. Who both will bring the, to light the hidden things of darkness, will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Of these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, which is written, that no one of you be puffed up in your own, for your own against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory, as if thou hast not received it? Now we are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, which we also might reign with you. If I think that God hath sent forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, we are for we are made a spectacle unto the world, to angels and to men. <clears throat> we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. We are honorable, but we ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Labor, working with your own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are offscoring of all things unto this world, unto this day, excuse me. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved son warned you, for thou ye for for though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers? For the Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of the ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. That's an interesting line there that's now troubling me. That be the, the thing about the fathers. <clears throat> but there should only be one father, that would be God. So what is he saying there? For though ye have ten thousand instructors of Christ, yet have ye not many fathers? Well, there's only supposed to be one God. So this was trying to... For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What we, <clears throat> <clears throat> what will ye, shall I come unto you 
with a rod are in love and in spirit of meekness. <clears throat> That's a little troubling group of lines there that don't, I don't fully understand. Anyways, it will come to me, I'm sure. Give me just time. 1 Corinthians 5, chapter 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily, for I verily, as absent in the body, put present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. I wonder if they really was having sex with a literal man's father's wife, or was it some kind of mixing again? Because a lot of times the symbology also refers to uh, going back into Judaism. The synagogue of Satan. <clears throat> but then again, it could be both. I don't know. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, my spirit and my spirit in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord, which is coming to them shortly. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Now I see this, this leaven and leaven the whole lump. And when did Jesus talk about that? It was the teachings of the Sadducees and Pharisees and scribes. I'm putting my money on that. I don't think this is really a dude having sex literally with his mom. But I could be wrong. But I'm thinking that it's going. It's, it's symbolic, as they always use this. But the woman and religion and etc right and the bride of christ and the followers of, of god that kind of thing but i could be wrong but why would you go from what we already have read and the uh, <clears throat> and the gospels about this and jesus talking about the love and love is the whole lump and that kind of thing and going from there to this i don't know maybe it's both maybe it's some kind of religious practice back then i don't know I'm just speculating at this point, but I would, since it's a spiritual book, I wonder how much is really focused on literal this dude having sex with his dad's wife. Don't know. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is a sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not the, then he goes from there to from him having sex with his mom, his dad's mom, to this. That don't make any sense to me, except if he's talking some Hebraic, uh, Hebrewism type of symbology. And we're talking something spiritual now. <clears throat> Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even christ our passover is sacrificed for us i can't even imagine somebody but want to hang out with these people who was literally having sex with his dad's mom i would imagine just doing that literally would try to drive you away from being around people who actually believe in jesus i think it would be kind of like unless he has that is zero conscience or incredibly confused I don't know. If anybody has a better better answer, let me know. This might be something to call on somebody who knows more. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be new, a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, 
neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, ye yet not altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company with any man that is called a brother, a, be a fornicator, covetous, idolater, a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, which such, and one know not to eat. <clears throat> For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. <clears throat> well, that's pretty whacked out and wicked if you're having sex with your daddy's mom. So, literally. <laughs> But then again, if you're trying to push Judaism back on people when they've been set free from it, that's pretty wicked as well. Chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians. Dare any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more shall that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to you to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you no, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother, go to law with brother. So, but brother, go to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong why do ye not rather take wrong why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded <clears throat> this is a... nay ye do wrong and defund defraud excuse me and that your brethren know ye not that the unrighteous shall be not inherit the kingdom of god but not deceive, neither fornicators, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, uh, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Well, then maybe it is now going to this thing. Maybe it actually is. The guy really did have sex with his dad's mom, which is pretty darn crazy. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly, and belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ, and make them the members of an harlot. God forbid. This is very spiritual. This is all about religion. It's like bouncing back and forth. 
Or is it bouncing back and forth and I am bouncing back and forth? What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For one, for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. <clears throat> I guess, a little bit of both, I guess. First Corinthians chapter 7. Now concerning things whereof ye wrought unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, lest every man have his own wife, let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. And the wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt ye tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. <clears throat> Interesting. Not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as myself, but every man has his proper gift of God, one after an, this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. We got a mission right now, that's for sure. That's to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not everyone has that mission. But in the body of Christ back then, for sure, that's what they had. Because they knew that the day of the Lord, the last days, was the second coming was going to happen in their generation. They had a big mission. That was to go help harvest up the elect, for lack of better words. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, and be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. The woman with the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. <clears throat> but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk, so, and so ordain I in all the churches. If any man called being circumcised, let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called uncircumcised, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing but keeping of the commandments of God. 
Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it? But if thou mayest be made free, let us let uh blah, blah, blah. let's try this again. But all right, sir. Let's start from the beginning of twenty one. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it? But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price, and be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man to so to be. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But an if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, because I spare you. But not because, but I spare you. <clears throat> For this, let's try this case. But if, but and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both you that have wives be as though they have none. Why? Well, because I expected Jesus to come back in their generation. And they that wept, as though they wept not, and they that weep, as though they weep not, and they that rejoice, as though they rejoice not, they have, they, and they that buy, as though they possessed not, and they that use this world, as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. More, uh, the judgment's coming. That's what he's saying, you know. You put your faith in this world right now, you're making a huge mistake. Yeah, the resurrection's coming. The second coming's coming. You put your faith in the world in your lifetime, the first century, leading up to 70 AD, is a huge mistake when you have a mission. You were chosen to be a harvester, a worker, a servant of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lord of all spirits. That's what you're there supposed to be doing. That's why it was so important at the time to be talking about these in particular. I'm not saying they're not important today, but that there's a different significance, you may say. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passes away. But I would have you, without care, carefulness, he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married cares for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and spirit. But she that is married cares of the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Others serve the Lord without distraction. Relationships definitely do that. Uh, either way, either you have a relation with the Lord or you have a relation with your spouse and there are big things are coming soon to the people, the, the saints, the followers of Jesus Christ. You got a job to do, boys and girls. Uh, making babies is not it right now. 
And this I speak for you, your own prophet, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncommonly towards his virgin, if she passes the flower of her age and need so require, let him do that, do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. Nevertheless, he that is standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, doeth well. So then, he that giveth her in marriage doth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. Why? Because I got a job to do, serve God. The wife is bound by law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband is dead, she is at liberty to marry to whom she will only in the Lord. But she is a helper if she is so abide. After my judgment, I think also that I have the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Chapter 8, 1 Corinthians. And now as touching the things offered unto idols, we know that we are, all have knowledge. Uh, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other than God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many, the Lord's many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom all things are all things, and we in him, and the Lord Jesus, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we are one. How be it that there is not in every man that knowledge, so some with conscience of the idol unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, that their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat command, commandeth us not to God, for neither, if we eat, we are the better, neither, if we eat not, we are the worse. Okay. But take heed lest any means, by any means, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee, which hast knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ died. But when ye sin so against the brethren, wound their and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. Interesting, to say the least. So I think that might be a good place to stop. We're halfway through First Corinthians, and the next time we're reading, we'll get through the Corinthians. We'll pull along.